very good morning to all of you today we have to discuss about the uh, transport layer protocol in the previous video lecture we have discussed about the different functionality and services uh, that is in the transport layer uh, then uh, in the second video we discuss about the uh, uh, flow control mechanism that uh, we use in transport layer so in this today's video we have to discuss uh, protocols udp protocols tcp its functionality uh, packet uh, tcp segment header udp segment header uh, so the most common protocol uh, in the protocol stack uh, if you look at the protocol stack you can find it uh, in the protocol stack uh, uh, application layer protocols are there different protocols ftp telnet they prepare the message and they takes the help of uh, transport layer protocol to send uh, support to end to end communication so tcp and udp are the two most popular protocol that is available in the transport layer uh, one is called connection oriented one is called connectionless so these two protocols are uh, used for different purposes uh, both have different applications uh, based upon that application uh, different application processes uses either the tcp or the udp so the, uh, the in this uh, these are the different application which typically uses the udp and these are the application processes these are typically uses udp but some but, uh, some protocols they both uses uh, tcp as well as udp uh, depending upon certain conditions uh, for example http that it typically uses tcp but uh, another variants of http which uses udp is called http u in the same way uh, ftp typically uses uh, tcp but uh, uh, the lightweight uh, uh, ftp like trivial ftp that uses udp so uh, that depend upon some criteria like what packet size is that or what type of application what type of uh, support is required based upon that uh, these protocols application processes protocols they uh, go for either tcp and udp all, all other things are there also uh, that uh, determine what to select whether the reliability is a factor or the, uh, the uh, packet overhead is a factor because uh, tcp is the has higher packet overhead in comparison to udp so we have to uh, start uh, the discussion by discussing focusing on the udp uh, user datagram protocol is the, the connection less protocol in transport layer reliable not like a tcp uh, connection less uh, uses the datagram approach uh, similar to ip and uh, it is uh, faster and uh, lightweight uh, means less overhead so the applications uh, those are uh, need a, uh, uh, the information to be communicated immediately without establishing a path prior to data communication that type of application they prefer udp uh, typically video streaming audio audio streaming the, uh, multimedia messaging these type of applications are suitable uh, and they are supported through udp <coughs> so uh, udp packet uh, 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 the header udp header we will discuss this udp header the structure of the udp header is given here uh, it consisting of uh, this is the header part uh, this is the uh, data um, data part so the header includes uh, source port number and then a destination port number both are uh, 2 byte uh, 16 bit and total length determine what is the maximum length including header and uh, data this is also 16 bit so the max this field uh, can support up to 2 to the 16 that is called 64k so maximum size uh, that can be supported uh, that is 64 kilobytes and checksum is a typically uh, error uh, error uh, error control mechanism that uh, is used by udp in order to verify whether the uh, packet uh, during the transmission is corrupted or it is uh, error free checksum is used in the header information so uh, this source port num 2 byte and a uh, destination port is 2 byte total length is 2 byte checksum is 2 byte so total the header in in the udp is typically uh, 8 bytes and followed by the data now uh, we have to uh, 
let's start with a simple example uh, a typical header information uh, uh, is given uh, this is related to UDP uh, it is the information is available in a hexadecimal format so sometime uh, somebody may ask that uh, what are the information what do what do you interpret from this so if you if you remember the that of structure of the UDP uh, source port number so uh, the first two field this two field uh, uh, is represents the uh, these two field represents the uh, 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 source port number and uh, the next field represents the destination port number so uh, CB uh, the source port number uh, is related to this one this is the source port number uh, and uh, uh, that the, in this example it is CB and destination port number is uh, 84 uh, it is hexadecimal in hexadecimal format so the value of the CB is uh, B is 11, C is uh, 12, 16 into 2 to the 12, uh, 16 into 12 plus uh, 11. That is the port number of the source. Destination port number is 84, uh, 4 into 1, uh, 16 into 8. So and remaining uh, that uh, remaining field, uh, this is how much? Uh, this is 16. Sorry, CB84 is the source port number. 00D is the destination port number and 001c is the total field number and 001c is the uh, checksum that is that is the representation so cb84 the bi binary equivalent of this you have to compute it uh, c means 12 1100 b means 11 1011 uh, like that so you have to compute what the binary equivalent of this number which will represent the what source port number as well as uh, destination port number so uh, what is the source port number uh, uh, source port number basically uh, the first four field hexadecimal destination port number typically the remaining four field this we can able to compute uh, and if you compute the number will be uh, 52100 for this given example in this way uh, you can able to determine what the remaining fields and its values like port number uh, third external digit uh, defines the packet uh, length so this is vector length is 28 bytes 28 bytes means what 28 bytes means it includes both header as well as uh, data so 8 byte is the header field so 20 byte is the data field so because in the combination of both is 28 bytes so the length of the data field is 28 minus 8 that is 20 bytes and destination port is a 13 which is a well known port number so uh, the packet is from client to server and it is a daytime process that is the objective now UDP services, uh, um, already we discussed that uh, basically UDP is used for connection, uh, connection less services uh, where no need to establish a connection prior to transmitting the data. Uh, it supports process to process connect uh, communication uh, similar to TCP and also it has no flow and error control mechanism or limited you can say no flow error control mechanism is supported in uh, error control uh, checksum is supported uh, but not uh, other features flow control so there is no feature for support to flow control so uh, these are the functionalities which is sub checksum is there uh, which uh, used for uh, error uh, control and congestion control mechanism there is no such information to be provided in the UDP header to content uh, to keep the congestion information encapsulation is done packet inclusion is part of the transport layer uh, <coughs> queuing is done uh, multiplexing deployment is done uh, so these are the different functionality that is supported through supported through uh, UDP now coming to uh, pseudo header uh, because this is used while computing the checksum um, checksum is used basically by adding the pseudo header information and uh, by adding all this uh, in data and then finding the sum um, uh, we will look uh, later we will discuss some example to understood how it is computed so this 32 uh, this additional part of the some information from the ip datagram that they are included uh, for computing the checksum this 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 tudp header as well as a part of the ip datagram is combinedly known as uh, uh, pseudo header so which includes uh, ip number source 32 bit destination IP number that is also another 32 bit and um, all zero fields are there uh, 8 bit protocol field represent whatever protocol it uses and 16 bit total length field 
uh, total length field and then source port number, destination port number, UDP length that is related to UDP header and the remaining is called uh, data. So this pseudo header is uh, computed uh, both for ETCP as well as UDP uh, who in order to find the sum, checksum. So you have to add all this uh, information and you find the sum and you have to complement this in order to get the checksum and that checksum file is in 32 bit form that to be placed in the checksum field of the uh, UDP header. And that is the objective of uh, describing about the pseudo header. Uh, these are the uh, these are the some cases that typically check some uh, it consider like for a center uh, design decide not to include check some in this case uh, the check some field is typically contain zeros the center decide to include the check some but the value of the sum is all one so value of the sum is all one then check some will be zero in this case one second you have to make the complement that the rules and center decide to include the check some but the value of the sum all, all zero see it, this case is not possible because some of the pseudo header contains um, non-zero values, so it is not possible. So these are the typical scenario uh, where you, it is helps to determine what to be the value to be kept in the uh, checksum field. Uh, now coming to next part, uh, already I have told uh, no need to focus on these things. Uh, UD applications already I have told these are applications uh, in which we need a Mm, uh, video streaming, audio streaming, we need a less delay. Uh, in their case, uh, when the packet size is small, in that typical application, so you go, go for UDP. So typically DNS uses uh, UDP and uh, 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 other uh, like uh, SNMP that uses uh, RIP, the routing protocol that uses UDP. Uh, but most of the protocols, they go for uh, TCP. And there is also some other criteria to that to be followed. Uh, connection less, uh, lack of error control, congestion control, uh, these are already we have discussed applications. So this is the some information about the UDP. Uh, let's focus on the TCP, the most popular powerful transport layer protocol uh, that is called TCP, uh, transmission control protocol, uh, which support almost all the features of transport layer, uh, which is not supported by the UDP typically. Process to process communication is supported and stream delivery, byte streaming, byte oriented, it supports byte oriented, then uh, multiplexing. So it is reliable order, point to point, uh, full duplexing, uh, uh, then uh, flow error and congestion control. All these features are supported by the TCP. Uh, let's focus uh, quickly uh, uh, TCP features. Uh, uh, first one is called uh, numbering system. It uses a sequence numbering concept uh, that is called a byte number. Uh, uh, all the uh, addresses are assigned to bytes. That means sequence number of a packet it determines the first byte address, uh, first byte address of the pa that packet. Sequence number uh, it uses a sequence number. Typically, the sequence number of the TCP is 32 bit because it is kept large so that uh, there cannot be. Uh, at any instant of time, there cannot be a duplicate message in the window. That is the logic behind it. Also, another logic is that uh, as the TCP uses byte ordering, so rather than packeting, it uh, it go for the uh, address of the uh, packet for is the starting address of the byte. So that is the reason for which it is kept a 32 bit. So once sequence number is 32 bit, acknowledgement also the same sequence number acknowledgement is the same. So both are 32 bit. We will discuss the format of the UDP TCP letter. Now, uh, so it typically uh, let's start how TCP uh, uses the sequence number. Uh, uh, in this uh, uh, a TCP connection want to transfer 5000 bytes uh, and the, uh, that is called ISN, initial sequence number. Initial sequence number is uh, 1001. Sorry, 10,001. 10, uh, what are the sequence number of each segment if data is sent in the five segments? So five segment means what? Uh, each one is 1,000 bytes. Uh, so 1,000 bytes starting with 1,001. 10,001. So, so first sequence number or segment number one range will be from 10,001 to 11,000. Because each packet, each segment is 1,000 bytes. Second will be from 11,001 to 12,000 and so on. 
this way uh, the sequence number uh, uh, of a packet determined by the address starting address of the data that is the concept that tcp uses uh, segment uh, tcp the unit of data uh, is known as segment in tcp and uh, encapsulation is done uh, that means when it receives the message from the application processes then append the information that is called the header information which include uh, port number destination port number then uh, window receiving window size all these things we have to discuss during the tcp format uh, the tcp structure is looks like this uh, header and board data this uh, header length is varies from 20 bit minimum to maximum as much as 60 bytes uh, then the data field uh, that combines these two things are known as called uh, segment the unit of data in the tcp transport layer is called segment segment is a to data that header is 20 byte to 60 byte if we are not using padding or options fields then it is 20 byte minimum if you compare this to with udp uh, udp is 8 byte minimum uh, that is uh, udp is 8 byte where tcp is a 20 to 60 byte variable source port number uh, that is 2 byte 2 byte sequence number to 4 byte and the acknowledgement 4 byte so this is 4, uh, this is 4, this is 4, this is 4, this is 4, so 4 plus 5, 4 into 5. Uh, this is the minimum 20 byte field, so this include what? Uh, source port number, that is your, the source port number, the value we have to discuss later. Destination port number is same, and then sequence number 32 bit already I have told. TCP uses a large sequence number, uh, which include 32 bit. Acknowledgement and sequence number are related, so both are 32 bit. Then this header length, H length, this is known as header length. This is how many 4 byte words the TCP header content. Suppose if the header is 20, then the value of the header length will be 5. 5, 5 means what? It will be 0, 1, 0, 1. Suppose all the options and padding are used, so the header will be how much? 60. 60 means how many 4 byte words? Now 15. 15 means what? 1, 1, 1, 1. So in that case, header length will be 1, 1, 1, 1. So, Sometimes some question will come, suppose a part at an instant, uh, the values in the header length is 1101. What the meaning of this one is? 110 means how much? 11 is 8, 4, 12 plus 1, 13. This is in binary. So it means 13. 13, 4 bytes what? 13, 4 bytes what means what? 13 into 4. That is 52. So total uh, uh, 52 is the header length. So if the minimum header is 20, so how many options are there? That is 52 uh, minus uh, 20. That is how much? 32 options field are used. There are two options and a padding. Sometimes the segment size, uh, that is a minimum uh, size to be maintained. If the data that there is not enough data to support it, at that time some information added, additional information that called, called padding. So which is a options field and a padding uh, combines to 40 bytes. Otherwise. Uh, you have to go for the minimum that is 20 bytes. So minimum overhead for a particular segment, any TCP segment will be uh, that is how much uh, 20 bytes. So now coming to remaining flags, there are the, uh, just look at this, uh, that is reserved fields. Uh, then the six flags are there that represent a particular status of the communication like a urgent pointer, uh, acknowledgement field, push, reset, sync and fin. Uh, this uh, we will discuss uh, as well as window size, uh, checksum and urgent pointer, okay. So we have to discuss one by one. As whenever we have to set an urgent pointer that field in the TCP header, then you have to set the urgent pointer flag to one. So urgent pointer is identify the starting address of the data where urgent data is placed. Like that acknowledgement, if that uh, acknowledgement is the, the data packet, uh, uh, the piggyback, the acknowledgement is piggyback in the data packet, then SCK field in the flag will be set to 1. That means no need to send or no need to send a separate acknowledgement packet. It can send the acknowledgement along with the data packet by resetting, by setting the flag to 1. Same thing uh, that whether it is a push, whether the uh, sender is pushing the information, uh, if it is like that, then the push flag will be set to 1. In case of uh, reset the connection, if you some parameter you need to change uh, because TCP is a connection oriented, a connection to need to be established before the prior to data communication. If certain information need to be re re revised, at that time reset uh, to be set to 1 
uh, then uh, this cross sink this is the initial packet uh, that is uh, used for establishing connection between the uh, between the two end parties and fin is typically the information through which we can able to we can able to uh, we can able to um, through which we can able to terminate it that is the criteria uh, but we will discuss more detail sync and fin later uh, then uh, um, pseudo header tc already have to, to discuss this pseudo header uh, similar to udp uh, no change uh, that all the part of the ip information is added to the uh, tcp in this case same information 32 bit source number 32 bit ip destination ip number and then uh, zero fields are there 8 bit protocol fields are there and then total length fields are there yeah. and then remaining are the header information of the is used by the tcb that is 20 byte source port number destination port number sequence number acknowledgement number then uh, this is header length and reserve field and flags window size uh, that is the receiver window how much you have to set it checksum is used for error control and urgent pointer as just i have mentioned uh, and remaining are the data and options so this, this basically this uh, pseudo header is used for who, for, uh, for making for the value checksum field for in order to use a checksum value we have to go for a pseudo header now coming to tcp connection uh, we have to discuss different type of uh, activities that is used in tcp tcp connection establishment tcp data transmission then tcp tear down connection close these things to be discussed uh, it is better to discuss through a image so that it will be easy to understood so i am not uh, reading the text what is written here uh, for uh, for other purpose you have to go through this uh, now coming to the uh, typically uh, connection establishment phase three way three way handshaking uh, i will i'll focus on it reset uh, sync and uh, sync and uh, sync acknowledgement and uh, acknowledgement then data transfer uh, or data communication between the two end parties and then, then then the connection termination phases half close full close we will discuss all this thing in detail now let's start with one example uh, uh, this is example typical example uh, this is called a handshaking how handshaking takes place uh, prior to data communication this is connection establishment phase so uh, this is the uh, so there is two term we are using that is called a passive open and active open passive open active open means uh, server remain in a, a, in listen state uh, that means it is ready to listen to the clients so this concept we call passive open and whenever any client has any data need to be received or need to be sent it initiates the process by sending the sync packet that is called active open so the client server communication one one of the entity or end point should be in the active open one should be on the passive open so its sync message include what this s field uh, uh, this field uh, your what that is a flag sync field so that means uh, and uh, with a isn is means what isn means a uh, initial sequence number uh, that initial sequence number is 8000 any number randomly it is select any number from where it will start so the sequence number is uh, uh, taken as 1000 and it is a sync message that means a connection to be established between the client to server in reply to that uh, that uh, it uh, the message which is coming from the uh, from the uh, where it is coming from the client server is that is the uh, that is the sync and acknowledge message so sync and acknowledgement message uh, the, this is called uh, what is that uh, sync and uh, sync and sck that sync means uh, yes definitely uh, it want to send a sync because server want to communicate and acknowledgement is for uh, for the receiving the previous packet so uh, acknowledgement is for what uh, acknowledgement for uh, acknowledgement for the previous packet that means the packet i have received is 8000 I am expecting 8000 one next time from you. That is the objective of this uh, acknowledgement. And this sequence number is 15000. Though client will send 15001 means I, I am expecting 15000 one next time. So this is called three-way handshaking. So this is sync message. This is sync and SCK message and this is uh, acknowledgement message. Three-way. Client sends I want to make a connection. Uh, receiver or server says 
I accept your connection and I am also sending a sync message to you. Also in addition to that, they are also sending what? That this is called a receiver window size. What do you, how much it can receive? Receiver window size means if you want to make a communication, you can send the, uh, the size of the information I can I can keep in my buffer that is in terms of bytes is concerned okay so in the same way uh, sender uh, client in this case says inform that uh, server that my window size is uh, something like uh, 10,000 bytes if you want to communicate to me then you can send 10,000 data at a time I have that capacity to receive so this this is the additional information that is that called called uh, uh, handshaking uh, that is called connection is part of the connection establishment phase uh, once this is done, then uh, this connection is established. Means uh, both uh, client and server will come to the uh, ready state. Means they can now communicate uh, the data between them. Uh, one can send, one can receive, and vice versa. Now this is the uh, data transmission next phase. After that is called data transmission phase. Uh, once the connection is established, anybody uh, can send the message and uh, can expect the acknowledgement by the round trip time. So, uh, so client send a message which you can send number 8001 and uh, uh, it's also sent the acknowledgement for the previous package it received 15001 means I have received 15000 SCK 15001 means uh, packet up to 15000 acknowledged. I am expecting 15001 next time. So, 8000 means this is my sequence number 8001. So, uh, here uh, client sent one packet another packet so, uh, the TCP uses cumulative approach. Cumulative approach means I did receive packet number 8001, receive packet number 9001 and it sent the acknowledgement for 10001. Means 9000 to 10000 uh, it received, this is the packet by its 10000. So, what is expect next time? It expect 10001. So, these two packets are acknowledged through only one packet. That we have to discuss later the acknowledgement criteria. Typically, TCP does not uh, immediately re reply the acknowledgement by receiving one packet the best upon different condition it sent the acknowledgement so this is cumulative cumulative means uh, uh, that means if ck 10001 uh, means up to packet 10000 has been received by the receiver so once the connection this this will continue from both sides once it is uh, done then next that that phase is called connection termination phase in the connection termination phase what happens uh, one of the uh, party have to say that yes i have done it means i have to nothing to transmit next so, uh, in this case, uh, 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 client says fin, the, it set the fin, fin means what? Fin means uh, so it set the flag to uh, 1, fin means uh, I say I have nothing to transmit, so you can accept it my finish information. So, that fin plus acknowledgement that need to be communicated from the uh, opponent means uh, from the other side of the TCP, here it is server. So, it's acknowledge the, uh, what is that? Fin means yes uh, once it gives the acknowledgement then this is called half close means client says i have finished server says i acknowledge this is called half close but server not says i have finished but in this given example server also said fin server also sent a fin means it acknowledged the previous fin of the client also it sent yes i have also no data no further data to transmit also send the both fin and acknowledgement through single packet this is stands for uh, acknowledgement this stands for fin these are two flags already discussed the six flag in the TCP segment. Uh, so, here it is said acknowledgement and this is called typical last acknowledgement. We will discuss later in the TCP state. So, so this three way of uh, termination criteria is connection closed or uh, this is called when one is closed, this is called half closed. When both side is closed, this is called full closed. So, both party agreed that connection is terminated and connection is tear down. So, Typically, a TCP support three way of uh, handshaking, then followed by data transmission, followed by uh, data termination or connection termination. Half close already have mentioned that uh, half close means one of the ones uh, one connection one and one TCP uh, one TCP entity uh, says I have to I have no further data to transmit. You can send fin. So, uh, typically both party means uh, in this case uh, client and server anybody can send the fin. No, no, right, no, not necessary that uh, client will always send. Server also can send but typically uh, we are uh, it is active open by the client. So, we are explaining this example through sending a fin from the client but it is can be applicable to 
all parties means uh, clients can say spin and a server also can say spin so when one party says spin and other party acknowledge this is half closed when other party says spin and other uh, this uh, counterpart says acknowledged then it is called full close now coming to state transition uh, that is uh, mm, this is one of the interesting uh, uh, the, uh, things to learn from the tcp uh, uh, close already we told that uh, initially uh, we have to initiated from the, uh, the both uh, client and server they uh, are in closed state and uh, once uh, server uh, initiate the process by passive open and to listen state listen state means server says that I, I, I am ready to receive the connection request from the client. Now uh, in this listen state uh, uh, this is called passive open and uh, active open uh, so client send uh, the sync message and that is a part of the active open means when client send a message now it is active open and it reaches to the which state sync sent sync sent state so client send the message sync sent by sending the sync message so once it is in the sync sent state state then what did you expect client expect the acknowledgement from the uh, from the server so if it is received the acknowledgement then both will if it receive the acknowledgement or it receive the sync plus acknowledgement this is the two option if server want to communicate then it have to send sync plus acknowledgement or server have to only acknowledge so either it receives the acknowledgement or sync plus acknowledgement now client enter to the established state the same way uh, when a client uh, receives server receive the sync received so it enter to sync receive state and now subsequently it enter to established state so once both parties client and server reaches to established state state then they can uh, now communicate the data between them so uh, uh, once again repeating uh, server was in listen state client uh, initiate the process by sending the sync message and enter to sync sent and once it receive a acknowledgement it enter to established state so in the same way uh, uh, passive open uh, process is done by server by uh, and uh, it is in the listen state once it is what it receive it receive a sync message it receive a sync message then it to sync receive state then if it can send what you can send a uh, acknowledgement or it can send a sync plus acknowledgement then it will enter the established phase so now both uh, party means client and server are ready to make the communication between them now once the data communication takes place and data transfer takes place in the established stage once the data transmission completed then anyone or typical let's start with the client send fin means i have i have to say I have no further data, so I have I, I want to finish it. So when it send, it enter to fin wait one, fin wait one, fin wait one, and if it is receive the acknowledgement, it enter to fin wait two, fin wait two, fin wait one means I have communicated uh, the uh, fin, I, I receive the acknowledgement, fin wait two, and when it receive the fin state from the uh, where, from the server, and uh, at that time it is was in the timed wait timed wait means what i receive the pin and i i send the uh, acknowledgement and uh, i have to wait for two unit of time because uh, uh, server may not um, uh, receive my acknowledgement that is called last acknowledgement so in that case server may send another pin message to me to the client so it is wait a two unit of uh, maximum maximum segment size time so that is called timed wait. So client which was in the timed wait, if does not receive any further message, then it enter to the closed state. So server after receiving the last acknowledgement from the client, enter to closed state. Client after waiting for two unit of a message, then also enter to uh, closed state. So this is the different uh, states transitions that takes place in TCP. Uh, these are the different states are listen sync receive sync set established fin wait one fin wait two closing timed wait close wait and last wait last acknowledgement so close wait means what uh, means uh, uh, i have received the fin and i have sent the acknowledgement from two client that is the half state but i have not sent the fin i have sent the fin then i enter to last acknowledgement stage i if you receive the acknowledgement then i will go to close so in the same way Fin wait one means I have already sent the fin. I receive fin wait two, but I have not received fin from the server. Once I receive the fin from the server, this one, 
I enter to time do it. Means I receive the fin and I send acknowledgement. I was in the time do it. If I not receive any further communication and it is it can be considered as a last acknowledgement, then after the expiry of the time, I have to enter to the closed state. So this is the state transition diagram that takes place in the TCP. Uh, I think uh, the otherwise that is also timed out. We will understood subsequently what the what is the meaning of timed wait, what is the meaning of uh, uh, closed wait uh, in the subsequent contents. Now coming to these are the different uh, states already have told uh, closed to listen or no need to discuss it further. I think that explanation uh, is no. Uh, these are the different uh, again I am repeating it uh, uh, so starting with close it is sync send the sync message sync send then <coughs> what is expect sync it uh, expect sync action that did not establish stage next I finished my data send the fin time to it receive the acknowledgement time to it too then receive the fin time to it send the acknowledgement wait for the 2 unit of time close. So this way uh, the both party uh, they are entering and closing uh, from the uh, closed state to all the, of what I have explained. Now that uh, this is the connection uh, scenario uh, between the already the what I have told. So that same thing no need to explain in detail I already have told it sync message sync close SDK. <coughs> This is called what? Uh, this sync set already I have told. This is a sync sync sent state. And once it, the connection is established, this is in which state? Established state. And once uh, uh, data transmission finished, uh, client says fin, then it is in fin wet state. If send it fin, it is in fin wet state. Receive a CK, it is in the fin wet too. Means expecting fin from the client receive the pin then after that run a timer that is called time to it 2 msl maximum segment length time and time to it send the acknowledgement and if does not receive anything after the expiry of the timer enter to the close state and this is the last acknowledgement i send the pin close to it i send the pin receive the acknowledgement i was in the receive uh, last acknowledgement once after receiving i enter to close state so these are the different uh, states uh, uh, state uh, of TCP client and server uh, through the line diagram. Now coming to TCP window, uh, TCP maintain two window, sending window and receiving window. Sending window means how to the amount of data that need to be sent that depend upon the opponents in the receiver window size of the receiver. That means the receiver window, how many data it can send, it will have to inform through the sync message or through the data message. Accordingly, the sender window will be adjusted. So this is called advertise window sized. During the connection uh, establishment, uh, the, uh, the uh, TCP entities, they have to announce their window size. It is only for meant for not for them. It is meant for who will ever will send, will send as for that information. So that dip, also this play major uh, criteria and it is part of the flow control mechanism. Uh, this already uh, this already information we have discussed in the flow control uh, uh, video of the transport layer uh, in previous video uh, lectures SF and SN are the variables that is maintained already SF stands for the outstanding packets fast outstanding packets and SN stands for the packet next to be transmitted so in this example this only difference is the byte address these are these are not packet number these are byte address that means 201 uh, already uh, transmitted but not, not acknowledgement. 201 to 260 bytes has been communicated at send but not acknowledged. Outstanding bytes sent but not acknowledged. 261 can be sent, bytes that can be sent. 300 up to 300 but 301 cannot be sent because it outside the range of the window and this is the window uh, that is called this is sender window. So this sender window depend upon the receiver window size. Receiver window size or based upon the advertisement uh, during the connection establishment phase, they have to announce that what is the window size so that uh, this window is adjusted. And uh, depending upon that value, this window can uh, be open up, can be closed up, can be shrink. Typically, we have to discuss it later. What is open up? Uh, closed means when, when it uh, receives the acknowledgement, 
for suppose for example it receives the acknowledgement for uh, 201 uh, by receiving 202 then it closes now window will uh, uh, means close means this 201 will be purged from the buffer open up means when uh, uh, when uh, uh, new information are entered to the window then it is opening up means suppose uh, for a given example this given example when 201 is purged then the size of the window if it remains same then this new byte ent will enter to the window and this uh, entering of the new information to the window is known as opening up. So, uh, depending upon the acknowledgement, uh, this is called uh, left wall, that is called if you represent this is called SF, and this is the right wall, that is means what? The value of to which they can be transmitted, and the left wall will move towards the right, and right wall will move towards the uh, right. Left wall will move towards the right, it is called close. Right wall moves towards the right is called open, but right wall when moves towards the left that is called shrink. So that is a criteria for it, uh, we will discuss it later. Uh, typically when the window size, advantage window size reduced and some of the data they cannot be accomplished at that time the shrinks occur in the, but typically it is uh, it is not occurs, uh, there are different criteria is maintained to in order to avoid this one because it creates a problem, shrinking creates a problem. So, that things we have to discuss, that is a condition for it, if new add, uh, new acknowledgement and new window size less than the previous acknowledgement previous window size, then only that shrink will occur, otherwise it will not shrink. Uh, same thing just I have mentioned, uh, no need to explain in detail because I have to cover many things within the stipulated time period. Flow control already we discussed flow control uh, stop and wait uh, sliding uh, sliding uh, stop and wait uh, GPN and SR. Typically TCP uses selective repeat approach but with some modification uh, to that. First of all it support cumulative as well as support uh, selective approach of acknowledgement also the window size. In uh, window size uh, sender and receiver uh, that depend upon what? advertise window size, how much information sender can send that depend upon the receiver window size of the receiver, announcement of window size of the receiver. We discussed the shrinking of the windows uh, the, which is associated to the problem called silly window syndrome problem. A uh, silly window syndrome problem is a problem uh, it is uh, occur when the uh, sender is very slow uh, means it is not uh, sending much data as well as the receiver is very slow, it is not consuming over data, at that time the problem is called silly window syndrome problem. This is basically typical occur when the sending uh, TCP as well as receiving TCP does not able to support uh, more number of data. That problem is called silly window problem, so there are some of the solutions that exist also. Now already these things we have discussed during the flow control mechanism, uh, this is the flow control mechanism between the application process of the transport layer to uh, 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 application uh, layer uh, processes and transport layer uh, processes, another between the transport layer to uh, receiver's transport layer, another, another between the receiver application layer to receiver transport layer. So flow control feedback mechanism also there based upon that uh, window is adjusted. Now uh, discuss one example, uh, this is related to what example of flow control. Uh, if you if it is visible to you, uh, the, the, this is the first sync quick claim following. Uh, this is the sync message uh, which announced that size of the packet number is 100. I think it is clearly visible and uh, it receives a sync process CK uh, that ISN from the receiver is 1000 and acknowledging to 101. And this is the window size 800 means uh, receiver window RWND that is the receiver window the size is 800 it informs the sender that you can send maximum 800 uh, bytes. That is my sound size that otherwise uh, there will be uh, there will be some congestion. I cannot uh, keep it in my buffer, I can drop it. So uh, after receiving this uh, sender adjust it window to 800. So uh, now if you look the size of the uh, uh, window at sender is adjusted as per the information obtained from the client. Uh, sorry, in this case, receiver which is a server. So, this way the value changes 
for example, it was 800, later it is reduced to 600. Why? Now, because uh, it is communicated, they are kept but not forged. Because why it is they are not forged? I mean, they kept in the buffer, but application process is slow, it cannot consume it. So, I, 800 was original space available, but uh, now it is occupied 200, so remaining space uh, is 600. So, it announced that, that means uh, my window is reduced to 600 means my application process not consume the amount of they supposed to consume it. If they consume it, the window remain 800. This way, the window, if you go through the contents, you have to find it. The window adjusted depending upon the availability. When it is opening up, then it will open and window size increase, window size decrease depending upon the consumption at the receiving end. Now coming to uh, Coming to example, just I have already told that uh, um, uh, typically when the, what is that, uh, your, uh, this is a new window size uh, uh, that is called uh, 4, acknowledgement is 210, less than previous windows uh, size 12 and previous acknowledgement 206 and this is the example of shrink, otherwise there is no shrink, means 210 plus 4 to 14, 206 plus 12 is 218, so this is less means shrinking will occur. That is the only criteria when shrink can be done. What is the shrinking? Shrinking means the right wall moves towards left. Means some of the window, those, those the data already there in the window, they will be outer side to window. That is the problem. That example just uh, what I have told. Uh, previously, this was the 206. Uh, that is the window size was 12. So, this is the previous SCK was 206, 206 plus 12 and now window received this acknowledgement you have received 2010 but window size reduced because application the uh, it says that uh, it is not consuming that the buffer is occupied so it can uh, support up to 4 bytes of data so now it is reduced so you just imagine this 214 was already communicated in the previous case that means 206 to 214 already transmitted now this 200 of which packet is transmitted now is outside the window range due to shrinking problem. So, this is a critical issue. Only you have communicated the packet or a bytes of information, but later it is found, obtained that or found that it is not in the window range also. So, due to why? Because it is shrink. What is the condition for shrink? New, uh, new acknowledgement plus new window size if less than the previous acknowledgement and previous window size, then the wall will be shrink. Coming to error control in TCP, same checksum mechanism are used. Uh, here, uh, uh, acknowledgement is two type, selective and cumulative. Uh, selective acknowledgement is a, uh, when just like selective uh, acknowledgement is similar to the mechanism used in selective repeat flow control and cumulative acknowledgement is similar to the acknowledgement used in GBN. But in uh, TCP, a selective acknowledgement options uh, provision is uh, used in uh, options and padding field of the TCP header, but SCK is a uh, flag. When acknowledgement flag set to 1, then the information is called cumulative. But uh, when you have to introduce this SAC, some example where you have to use the SAC, at that time you have to this option to be up, uh, enabled in the options and uh, padding field. Then uh, we have to discuss uh, all these things getting generate acknowledgement, I oh, will come one by one. Mm. Uh, TCP sending site, okay. Mm. Better to explain through an example, okay. Uh, these are different scenario in which TCP communication takes place. For uh, look at the example, uh, these are related to acknowledgement. Uh, how, at what condition, which type of acknowledgement comes? Now, rule one says that uh, if a uh, client send a packet or segment with sequence number uh, 12001 and it contained a data up to 1400 and if it receive it uh, then you have to uh, send the acknowledgement. Why it have to send the acknowledgement? Now because uh, the rule number one says that what? Uh, rule number one, uh, if it is a, uh, if it is a sack uh, then it have to immediately reply. But typically, look at the second. The, what is that? Uh, when it send the acknowledge two two packet. Look at here, second packet and third packet. 
with typically uh, when two packet are received in the first time it uh, that criteria is that uh, whenever you receive the first packet you start a timer uh, typically the value of the timer is set and if you receive another packet within that time then immediately send the acknowledgement if you are unable to receive the second packet within that time after the expiry of the time send the acknowledgement so this is one criteria what is the criteria is uh, you on receiving the acknowledgement the packet run a timer uh, if your timer expire and you are not receiving any further packet then send acknowledgement but if you receiving a, uh, another packet immediately that means after receiving two packet then stop the timer and send acknowledgement that the criteria that means typically after receiving two segment you have to uh, send acknowledgement that the criteria or if you are not receiving any acknowledgement uh, segment your timer expire then you have to send the acknowledgement these are the rule for what uh, acknowledgement another criteria is that uh, for example look at this example one packet communicated second packet communicated that rule already have told that after you are receiving two packet or two segment send acknowledgement uh, look at this third third packet third segment you have communicated you run the start the timer communicated one packet that is lost you communicate second packet that is received received but but it is out of order out of order means it is you are expecting to receive 701 but receive 801 as it is follow selected repeat approach so it will keep it what will ask for what it will ask for 701 so once you will say ask for 701 but it will keep 801 and once you send the uh, uh, 701 after your time out uh, or you are receiving a what is that acknowledgement and then you will send 701 and once you see receive 701 it will send for the 8 because already this packet uh, is there in the buffer so it will not send 801 it will send 901 that means up to 900 packet has been received that is the logic this is another uh, rule for acknowledgement first retransmission uh, this is uh, if you are receiving three duplicate acknowledgement then immediately you have to stop it and retransmit uh, that lost uh, uh, file and that are segment so for example in this case uh, uh, look at this uh, second scenario this this packet that is lost uh, then sck301 comes you are transmitting subsequently but this is first this is the first this is the first uh, duplicate this is the second duplicate this is the third duplicate if you are receiving three duplicate message then you have to do immediately stop it even if your window supp can support more number of uh, packet to transmit it but you, once you are receiving three duplicate acknowledgement you have to stop it and you have to send the this concept is called fast retransmission fast retransmission means if you are receiving three duplicate messages then stop the present communication immediately then send that what that particular packet requested by the receiver means in this example it is server so that is sequence number so this is another rule for sending the acknowledgement another rule for lost acknowledgement that for example, uh, you receive first packet, you receive second packet and you have to send acknowledgement as per that rule that uh, after receiving two packet you have to send that packet is lost, the acknowledgement lost. Subsequently your flow is support, uh, you have window, you can send some more data, seven, these two are communicated and uh, it is received and it is received. So receiver receive all the packet but acknowledgement lost but when it send the higher acknowledgement so no need to worry for about this one. Once the receiver receives receive 901, that means no, there is no a requirement for 701 is not required because of two data 900 already been accepted by the server. So these are the different rules uh, that uh, can be applicable for acknowledgement. And this is the same thing what I have explained uh, previously. Uh, you uh, explained uh, 701 to be expected, uh, but you. Uh, Timeout occur, restart the communication, but already it is received. So this is called lost, lost, lost means what is that? Packet is there. So if it is you are retransmit dating, it immediately will not wait for that uh, what the criteria wait up to what particular time and uh, it immediately send the 701. Means what? It is expecting 7. That means 501 to 600 and 601 to 7 already is there. So it is expecting 701 next time. So it will not wait that the criteria we have discussed after receiving first packet we have to wait for certain time or if you receive another subsequent packet you have to it will received already this is duplicate so it will send the immediate acknowledgement so uh, these are the uh, different flow control mechanism that is used in the uh, where in the tcp now let's focus on the congestion control mechanism 
quickly uh, congestion window and congestion detection congestion policy different uh, policy uh, used by the tcp uh, so for example like slow start uh, uh, additive increase multiplicative decrease then fast retransmission the different various of the tcp are there they apply different policy in order to avoid the congestion based upon that uh, there is tau tcp reno and new reno tcp that the, the, the policy determine what type of algorithm they are uses for uh, uh, managing the congestion like additive increasing slow start additive increasing multiply decreasing fast retransmission all this thing basically congestion is a global issue flow control is a local issue both looks very similar uh, the, because both are uses window uh, that is rwnd we are using for receiving window size in case of flow control and we are using cwnd congestion window in case of congestion control so both uh, adversely affect the flow uh, throughput but uh, flow control is between the end processes it hamper only the two end systems but congestion is a bigger issue it hamper the network so congestion control is more critical so protocol uh, gives more focuses on the congestion control in comparison to the flow control but both are important coming to the scenario uh, uh, coming to the scenario uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the cwnd that is the variable which uh, that is known as congestion window uh, that variable initially uh, starts by setting the value to 1 mss so initially it is sent 1 mss uh, if it is this is acknowledgement within the rtt the cwnd will increase cwnd plus 1 this equal 2 next time it will send two segment if there are acknowledgement first acknowledgement value of two is uh, cwnd increase by one three second acknowledge they remain four so next time cwnd increase this process is known as slow start so actually it is not slowly started it is exponentially it is started with a minimum value but after receiving is each acknowledgement the value of the window increase exponentially so it starts with one followed by two followed by four 8, 16, 32 and so on till it reaches the uh, upper uh, value determined by the threshold. Once it reaches the threshold then it will the progress will be uh, linear. That process is called congestion avoidance phases. Where uh, for each acknowledgement the value will be uh, CWND will be computed as CWND plus 1 by CWND. That will I will focus on the how the algorithm works. Okay. So this, this is called slow start. Slow start means what? Actually, it is not slowly started. It is started with slow, with a minimum value, but for each acknowledgement, it exponentially grows. So this way it continue. Starts with one, followed by two, followed by four, and so on. And this is called congestion avoidance. Uh, that is, once you reach to threshold, you cannot. Uh, how it is reaches? Whenever you the some event will occur, like if <coughs> some. <coughs> Mm, timeout will occur, some uh, duplicate messaging will occur. Then we have go for congestion avoidance phase. So then at that time, the, this CWND will not uh, increase uh, linearly that way. That means for each acknowledgement, it will not increase by one. For all acknowledgement, it will increase by one. Means, for example, I have communicated with my value of uh, CWND is four. If all these four are acknowledged, then my value will be increased to one. That means what? 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4. That is 4 by 4, 1. So next time value will be 5. If all 5 will be acknowledged, then my value will be to next value 6 and so on. That means once it slow starts over, then the congestion window will not increase by CWND plus 1 for each acknowledgement. It will increase by CWND plus 1 by CWND. That means uh, if all the uh, acknowledgements are uh, uh, all those packets are acknowledged, then only it will incremented by one. So this type of uh, progress is known as called what? Uh, congestion avoidance. This is called additive increase. Additive increase. Now coming to the state uh, in the slow start, uh, what the events can be done? Initially, uh, CWND uh, starts with setting the value to one MSS maximum segment uh, uh, size and the CSS threshold uh, uh, is initially some values uh, uh, then slow start starts by receiving the acknowledgement CWND will be CWND plus 1 it is 1 it is then plus 1 2 
then plus 2, 4 and so on. Once you, uh, this event occur, what the event occur? Either it is timeout, means uh, I am unable to um, get any acknowledgement and timeout occur or I receive 3 duplicate acknowledgement. There are two conditions that occur. Then I have to change the values. What is the values? My uh, threshold will be CWND by 2. Whatever the present value of the CW, half of that will be assigned to SS threshold and I will reset my CWND to 1. This I have to do if either timeout occur or if there is a 3 duplicate message I received. If CWND is greater than equal to SS threshold, then congestion avoidance phase I will go. Then I have to follow this principle what I have told. CWND will change linearly CWND plus 1 by CWND. That means if I send all the packets or for whatever the packet I have sent, if all are acknowledged, then that value will be added by 1. Otherwise, suppose I have communicated 8 packet. First, I receive first packet. So, 8 plus 1 by 8, 8 plus 2 by 8, 8 plus 3 by 8. So, 8 plus 8 by 8 means 9. Only when all the packets are acknowledged. That means this is occurring in which stage? It is occurring in the congestion avoidance stage. So, this type of uh, mechanism used in TCP variance or version known as TCP tau. Uh, now, coming to uh, some examples are there. Uh, Let us start with example uh, uh, through example uh, through a diagram. Uh, you have to go through the slides uh, to understand the problem. Uh, the problem is like that. Uh, um, an example of congestion control is start, TC started at trust threshold initially. Okay. Uh, SS threshold uh, value is 16 MSS. TCP uh, CWND is 1. Congestion window grows exponentially. Timeout occur after the third RTT. Th after third RTT, timeout occur. TCP assume that there is a congestion in the network. You will just set the uh, this new set to 4 MSS half of the current which is 8 ok. So, look at how it uh, how the question is like this. So, uh, initially uh, now this is a congestion window which is set to 1. Now, at this time your CWND CWND is equal to 1. So, uh, this is called slow start period. So, what happens in slow start period? In the slow start period after receiving the acknowledgement it um, increases 1 became 2, 2 became 4. 4 became 8. But when you communicated 8, timeout occur. Timeout occur means what? You are unable to receive the acknowledgement. So, you have to reduce the, reduce the uh, CWND to half and assign that value to threshold. So, 4 by 8 by 2 is equal to 4. Now, threshold become how much? 4 MSS and CWND is reassigned to 1. Okay? Then, from here, you have to once again run the slow start means 1, 2, 2, 4. But once you receive this when this value equal to 4, then this is congestion uh, CA, congestion avoidance phases means 4 will 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to this will grow linearly till some event occur. So, at this RTT, which RTT? At this uh, 13, 13 uh, time, start of the 13 uh, time. Uh, <coughs> Three duplicate receive three duplicate acknowledgement. So once you receive three duplicate acknowledgement, you have to go for the same algorithm. What? Reduce the congestion window to half. Now it is twelve. Reduce to half. It becomes six. And C W and reset to one. And then we go for C S C S S S slow start. Then go once again. This one to two, two to four, four to eight. But you will not reach eight. You have to reach six. Then from six, that means at which RTT? At sixteen. In the 17, if there is no event means no time doubt or no duplicate, 7, 8 and so on. So, this way the congestion window uh, uh, changes uh, by setting the CWND and uh, setting the threshold based upon the uh, event uh, time out and uh, 3 duplicate. So, just only difference I want to say here is uh, this TCP tau which deals both event as same whether it is timeout or whether it is a three duplicate acknowledgement, action is same that is uh, CWND is reduced to half and assigned to SS threshold and uh, CWND is reset to 1. But in, in case of uh, the TCP Renault, uh, it treats the 
uh, two events separately that means uh, the timeout and three duplicate acknowledgement are two event and they behaves differently uh, just to look at the difference then it will be understood so in the timeout it is same cwnd is equal to cwnd by 2 and set to value to 1 as it is what we have discussed in tcp tau but in the when he received three duplicate messages action is something different ss threshold is uh, what is the present value of the cwnd by 2 but the cwnd is not reset to 1 it uh, it receives some higher value what what this value this is half of the cwnd plus 3 for each duplicate acknowledgement it is uh, incremented to 1 so you start with a higher one so if you look so that uh, so that uh, you will uh, not takes more time to reach to that stage so uh, the, i will come to this diagram let's uh, explain how it is working in this uh, tcb reno version same example only the difference is what it starts timeout uh, timeout it occur at this time then uh, the algorithm remains same as the previous tau but when uh, three duplicate message are receiving the value is 12 it will not uh, it will reduce the, uh, that uh, threshold will reduce to, to half of the present cwnd 12 by 2 is equal to 6 but cwnd will not start from 1 it will start from the this value new value plus 3 6 plus 3 is how much 9 so uh, your uh, uh, cwnd will start from 9 where is 9 so it will start from the 9 that is the, that is that is the logic of the what tcp reno that means 9 and it will next time it will 10 and next time it is 11 and so on like this way uh, the uh, window will grow so this is the difference uh, between the uh, uh, reno version of the tcp and the tcp tau version uh, that means uh, the already i have told that what the uh, slow starts time route and these two things first recovery means you are receiving a duplicate uh, uh, packet then you will incrementing the cwnd by one this is the uh, tcp reno this is the function of additive increase multiplicate decrease a gradually increase slow start reduced half then gradually increase slow start reduced to half gradually so this just look like a short teeth structure so uh, this 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 type of uh, approach is known as called additive increase multiplicative decrease so it gradually uh, rises exponentially rises in the slow start phases once it reaches the threshold linearly changes but once the event occur like a duplicate acknowledgement or a, a timeout then it reduces to half this way zigzag zigzag structure so this is about the tcp uh, tcp uh, congestion uh, congestion control mechanism some numerical is a, uh, you have to solve it um, based upon this this is congestion control what the initial value of the condo what is the at what 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 will the these are the event occur between the at uh, time out occur at this state three typical messages occur at this step finally what is the value of the cw and d at this time state so that uh, you can compute uh, by based upon the algorithm what type of algorithm it is whether it is tcp tau or tcp reno you have to compute it then based upon that you have to go for it now coming to uh, um, that is the last part we have to focus uh, uh, tcp timers that will be better tcp timers tcp is a different type of timers uh, retransmission timers round trip timer uh, then uh, persistence timer keep alive timer time wave timer so rtt basically uh, i i will not focus on all these timers just give a few introduction to timer uh, one called is called uh, keep alive timer keep alive timer means uh, the time up to which the connection exists keep alive timer uh, that means during the connection establishment phase uh, that handshaking takes place where you have to uh, determine what is the time up to which the connection can be uh, established after the expiry of the time the connection by default will be tear down but before that if a time or uh, before that if your uh, data communication completed then you can send the film that is con that concept is called one timer then another time is called a round trip time round trip time already we know that what is the time it takes to send a message and uh, the, to get acknowledgement from the other end that time 
the, uh, for sending and time for receiving combined is known as RTT and basically we have uh, computed uh, bandwidth delay product by multiplying the bandwidth and delay that delay is nothing but the, the round trip type delay okay and that persistent timer the, if you understood the concept of persistence non persistence concept in application layer like http uh, persistence timers are there which they determine up to how much the persistence uh, connection to establish that values so, and time what means so what the two time what is the time of to which the sender or receiver can wait before going to close timed wait uh, which is set as the two times of the uh, maximum segment msl length so uh, this in general these are the different timers uh, let's conclude uh, this part uh, as well as the uh, uh, concept on transfer layer uh, summary uh, already we focus on many things uh, like uh, tcp udp transfer layer functionalities transfer layer services or oh, transfer layer plays an important role uh, in packet communication it uh, support process to process communication it provide end to end reliability it provides a, uh, a addressing scheme that is socket addressing mechanism then it support uh, uh, duplexing full duplexing then it support encapsulation decapsulation uh, what other things it supports uh, um, multiplexing demultiplexing uh, in addition to that uh, connection oriented and connection less congestion flow and error control so in general these are the different features supported in the transport layer and the most popular protocols under this uh, layer is tcp and udp and uh, already we did not focus on uh, these are the some uh, some things we did focus so many things are there for the study can help you to know all these things you have to go through rfc and you have to know wha how this uh, functionality are maintained like options field we will not discuss an option field you know we will not discuss detail and congestion because i have told congestion is a big parameter it is not related to application layer and uh, not only to transport layer it is related to other layer also we have to do go through different congestion mechanism are there congestion avoidance stage congestion control stages different leaky bucket algorithm to convert algorithm so we restricted our focus discussion to tcp tcp slow start tcp congestion avoidance stage additive increase multiplicative decrease we discuss the tcp states we discuss the connection establishment connection termination data transition phases computation of checksums all these things uh, stop and wait uh, go back and protocol as well as selective repeat protocol so uh, we focus all this thing in briefly and quickly and uh, for the study on this thing can help you to improve so let's stop it at this time uh, we have to if subsequent material is required then we have to prepare another video based upon that